Well, good evening, folks, and welcome once again. I've chosen to try to be outside. I see the clouds are forming once again, and I can hear thunder in the distance. So this is a typical Alberta day. We've had sunshine, we've had rain, we've had wind, we've had thunder and lightning. And hopefully we don't have hail as well before it's all over. But let's bow our heads and let's begin our study for this evening. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for this time that we have to spend together. Lord, may this be profitable for good work in our own life and for our own salvation and also for the salvation of others. I pray, Lord, that each one of us will not only just spend this little time listening to a devotional thought, but will spend much time in personal devotional life and thought. May we understand that we can take you with us into every situation, into every area of life, if we would keep you first and foremost, in our hearts and minds throughout the day. I ask that your Holy Spirit now would descend upon us as we study, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 15, verse 7. John chapter 15, verse 7. And here's what it has to say. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. A lot of people read this verse, and they start asking for all kinds of things, and they sometimes begin to doubt because they say, well, what's with this promise? Uh, but we have to make sure that when we are asking things of our Heavenly Father, we are being spirit-led and we are asking for the things that would benefit our eternal salvation. Sometimes we ask for things that might even be a little bit selfish, something to gratify me and something that I need or I want and something that would not benefit my eternal salvation. My Father who knows me better than I know myself will always make the decisions that will most benefit my eternal salvation and your eternal salvation. So we need to be spirit-led as we are asking for our Heavenly Father to assist us in earthly things. Now listen, though, let's listen to uh, Manuscript 73 and see what it has to say. There are many who get above the simplicity of Jesus Christ, supposing that they must do some great thing in order to work the works of God. Things of a temporal, na temporal nature absorb the attention of others, and they have little time for eternal thought or realities. Wearied out with cares that draw their minds from spiritual things, they cannot find time for communion with God. Constantly they ask themselves the question, how can I find time to study and practice the Word of God? I don't know what your experience has been before COVID happened. Uh, life may have been so busy, you didn't think you had a lot of time for God. Maybe when you were coming to him, you were tempted to wonder if you didn't have a close enough connection. And that's why some of the things you were asking for weren't happening as quickly as you wanted them to. Let's read a little bit more here, because if you think that maybe you have not been spending the time you need to, Jesus, I believe, is acquainted with, acquainted with the struggles that you and I go through. The Bible says we have a high priest who understands our suffering and our pain and the things that we have gone through. Why? Because he, too, went through the same things you and I face. John 15, 4 and 5 says this, Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, shall bring forth the same fruit. For without me you can do nothing. How do we abide in Christ? We take him with us no matter where we go. We ask him, as we are making decisions throughout the day, is this the decision you would have me make? Is this the decision that would lead me closer to your throne of grace? Is this the decision that will affect me in a positive way for eternal consequences? I'm going to read a little more here uh, from Manuscript 73. Our first and highest duty is to know that we are abiding in Christ. He must do the work. We are to seek to know what saith the Lord yielding our lives to his guidance when we have the spirit of the lord abiding in christ everything will take on a changed aspect the savior alone can give us the rest and peace we so much need and in every invitation he gives to seek the lord that he may be found of us he is calling us to abide in him this is an invitation not merely to come to him, but to remain in him. It is the Spirit of God that moves us to come. When we have this rest and peace, our daily worries will not lead us to be coarse and rough and uncourteous. We shall no longer follow our own will, for we will want to do the will of God, abiding in Christ as the branches 
of the vine. This is what I'm saying. When we abide in Christ and we are doing his will, you will be amazed how quickly things will change in your prayer life, in what you desire, and in what you're asking for. Your faith will be built stronger. Why? Because you're now doing the will of your Father who is in heaven. Christ declares himself to be the way, the truth, and the life. The way to heaven is represented as a narrow path cast up for the ransomed of the Lord to walk, but truth illuminates this path at every step. If you don't want to wonder what the future holds, if you want to know where you will be going and know what the end of this life will bring for you, then let the Lord illuminate every step of your life. Let him open the path. Let him make the ways straight before you. And whatever that narrow path he puts you on, he will keep you as long as you are faithful. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, I want to thank you that you are a God who is asking us to abide in you and with you. Why? Because you desire a relationship with us. When we have that relationship with you, as the Bible says, we hear your voice and we know it. Why? Because we've been listening to you every single day. Lord, may each one of us cast off worry and doubt and fear. Why? Because we are abiding in you. Lord, may that journey, if it has not started long ago, begin today where we practice bringing every decision, great and small, before your throne of grace. As we practice this now, our faith will be strengthened. And when the challenges come, we'll be able to say like those three young Hebrew boys, my God is willing and able to save me from whatever situation I'm facing. But even if he doesn't, I'll still be faithful because eternal consequences are at stake. And I desire an eternity with the one who gave everything for me. I thank you, Lord, for giving us this little thought this evening. I pray that we will dwell upon it and that it in some way will draw each one who is listening this evening closer to you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, thank you. And I hope your week is off to a good start. Blessings, and we'll see you again tomorrow evening.